you know, uh, the emerging of fantasy, where that's going, mm -hmm. to where it's came from, to where that where it's at today. You know, that's a new frontier and um, the emerging right now, of like you know, with the with the league that you've created. You know, it can only grow. This is Coach Funk, and I like to say welcome to FBA Breakdown. Today's show is sponsored by the Real No LA. The Real Node LA is a dynamic and immersive Layer 2 metaverse community that is based on the El Sereno neighborhood of LA Upland. The neighborhood boasts of 7948 properties, all of which have recently been minted out with the option of joining the Circle program. Residents can create a spatial I.O. home and link it to their house in the real Node La neighborhood, thereby allowing for a seamless and immersive experience. The real Node L.A. provides an incredible opportunity to explore the metaverse with various entry points available at https theralnode.com. As a result, the neighborhood is filling up fast with residents who are eager to explore and experience the endless possibilities of the metaverse. In addition to the Layer 2 metaverse community, the Real Node LA, there is also a Layer 1 metaverse community located in Upland.me El Sereno LA. This community offers a range of exciting features including manufacturing, shops, racing, theaters, concerts, cafes, and a comedy club providing endless opportunities for entertainment and exploration. The community also has a presence on Discord, providing a space for residents to connect and engage with one another. With such a diverse range of offerings, the El Sereno LA Metaverse community is a vibrant and thriving virtual world that continues to grow and evolve with each passing day. Now we got that out the way, let's get down to business. First and foremost, I would like to welcome everybody to the first episode of this season's FBA Breakdown, recapping week one and reviewing week two. Our three purposes for this podcast are keep it simple, embracing change, sports, and entrepreneurship. We seek to hear different perspectives on topics without judgment. Finally, number three, to discuss the season long progress of season two of the FBA Basketball League in Upland Metaverse. Now it's time to introduce today's panel, your host, of course, myself, Coach, Hunk, Coach Funk, former college basketball player at Robert Morris University, D1, Reed Children, homegrown Funk LLC owner and CEO, creator of the C His NFT project serial entrepreneur for 13 years and member of the infamous the evergreen last year seven eight community in Upland. and today's guest is facts he goes by the name of facts or g originally hailing from upstate new york specifically new syracuse where he immersed himself in a variety of industries including film media art technology real estate and the cannabis sector his current mission is to bridge the gaps between physical and digital worlds, aiming to accumulate valuable experiences and connections from both realms by seamlessly integrating them into an emergent, emerging metaverse in Web3. He's the founder of Umbrella House Productions Films by Coastal Film Tech Art Collective. My man, Facts, how are you doing today, my friend? Man, I'm doing better than most, man. I can't complain. <laughs> hey, if you start complaining, man, to be honest with you, I don't think nobody want to hear it, bro. We all have problems. It's how we navigate. Through, right? Yes, indeed. That's good to hear. Yeah, man. So, man, what can I say, man? First and foremost, 
thank you for being on the first episode, um, being a part of season one um, and season two. Um, it really means a lot to me because you're you're in the midst of things, if that makes sense. You're seeing the growth. I'm not saying we're where we need to be, but I see progress. And again, I'm more of a visionary. I would like to see where we can merge these two industries together and where we could be in five to 10 years. And what's your um, thought about just merging fantasy sports with the uh, metaverse, my friend? I mean, fantasy, the whole fantasy world in itself is you know, it's turned into, I mean, it's just as big as the sport itself. You know, it's just like, it's a whole industry within an industry. And um, to see how it's taking off right now, like with all the metrics that's related to sports now and how that's been like integrated into the game, you know, it's real fascinating to watch, man, and to witness. You know, um, cause this stuff hasn't always been around. So um, just to see where it's taking things, it's like you can only imagine. And, um, you know, it's all the new frontier. Like, you know, the home, the metaverse is a, is a new frontier. You know, uh, the emerging of fantasy, where that's going, mm -hmm. to where it's came from, to where, that, where it's at today. You know, that's a new frontier. And... Um, the merging right now of like, you know, with the with the league that you've created, you know, it can only grow, you know? And I agree, man. Um, it's crazy because I started off when uh, when I became an entrepreneur, I wanted to somehow create a, a fantasy uh marketing uh, like blog or like site. And I knew nothing of the metaverse there. It's just crazy how, you know, 13 years later that I'm able to, to attempt to merge those together. And the more and more I played the fantasy, you know, sport, um, I realized, man, it's more like the metaverse and NFTs that we realize. You know, you look at I look at the players we drafted and things of that nature, we own them for that season. So I look at them as NFTs without it being it called an NFT if you really look at it. You know, as long as it's on your team, you own. You know, so when you really start looking at the aspect like that and seeing how we can pretty much, you know, jump in between realities, man, the future is uh is bright. <laughs> I really believe so. Because you're just learning more and more and we are figuring out how to integrate the two. So I'm excited. But uh, with that being said, man, let's jump into um, season uh, one recap. Let me go ahead and share my screen real quick. Let me know when you can see it, please. All right. Yeah. Awesome. Can you, can you see it? Yep, I'm, yep I can. Yeah, I can see awesome. it. Man, so let's go ahead and jump into it, man. We already in season two. Um, I did officially announce unknowingly um, that I would try to do a, a episode every week. Knowing how I'm not remembering how long um, the fantasy basketball season is, I really like to recant that statement <laughs> just to give us some time to get some some um substance in each episode so i will try my best to do two to three episodes per month so every two to three weeks i will recap the previous week's progress until it gets kind of close to playoff times then i would definitely do one once a, once a, a week after each uh matchup but i think all right so i'm gonna fair. stay on, i'm gonna stay on top of them i'm gonna stay on top of fun for that all right <laughs> just DM me, bro. Don't be trying to put me on blast, man. Just DM me. But yeah, I need accountability, uh, a partner. So I appreciate that. Real stuff. Even though I might snap at you, I still appreciate you. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but let's go ahead and get jump into it. Uh, so week one, man, the matchup one, I took an L, bro. So I lost four to seven. I must say the throwbacks, man, I, I expected nothing less. This is one of the gems 
that came um, from a, a league that I'm part, I've been a part of for over 10 years. So he's a very, it's three of them, and he's one of them. So uh, it's a great matchup up, up until like the last two days, man. But, uh, you know, uh, I had to give him his due. His team looked pretty good, man. Um, so, all right. Hey, uh, congratulations on defeating the champ. Um, and matchup number two, certified bucket versus Coop. Um, if I'm not mistaken, certified bucket was the runner up last year, or he came in third. He was like the best record all year and lost to Wolf, if I'm not mistaken. But um, I looked at his team, we can review him a little bit later. Uh, and he, he has a team, and Coop has a pretty good team. What I can say is, week one. Um, it's kind of weird because every team doesn't play a full schedule week. You know, it's the beginning of the season, so some teams had three games, some teams had two, some teams had four. But now that we're in the week two, it should even out for the most part. So you could take week one for a grain of salt, but it is a, if you got blew out, you just got walked. You know what I'm saying? You look at your team, but if it was kind of close, a couple categories here and there, week one is really not a telltale sign. After week three, you really get a feel for what teams have and what they need to do. So, uh, uh, no, the third contest was the Headcrackers and the Den of Wolves. Now, I will say, this was one of the better matchups of the week. Um, the Headcrackers is actually GM by Fox. I'm going to let him speak in his shortly about the matchup of his perspective of what happened. But uh, Den of Wolves is actually the runner-up of last year's uh, season. And uh, I expect nothing less. He coming in, he has a pretty good team. He looks like he's more of a contender than pretender. A contender instead of a pretender. Um, I really thought this, this uh, matchup here was the matchup of the week. Um, that's my opinion. Others might have others, but um, facts. Since this is this was part of you was a part of this particular matchup. Do you have any, you know, uh, feedback or any, uh, uh, you know, you're at the podium, my friend. What happened in week one? Let the, let the league know. Hey, hey, all what happened was supposed to happen and happened, man. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean, like. You know, like that's how it was supposed to lay out, play out, and I'm I'm satisfied with how my team played. You know, we could have played better. Um, it's a it's a learning week, like you said. Um, I have a very young squad. I got some some uh, some young whippersnappers. You know, a couple rookies on the squad, so they got to get their butterflies out their belly. You know, so I mean, you know, I know that has to happen, man. And um, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I, I give it up to the Den of Wolves. Um, uh, yo, they they uh they showed out. They 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 showed up. Um, it was a close one, man. Really, I lost by a tie from point one point zero zero one percent with the field goal percentage, man. I had mm. 448, he had 449. And, mm. um, yeah, it was that close. And, um, what other category? Blocks. He edged me by last two blocks. Shot. I had 20, 27, 29. Yeah, last second shot, bro. Uh, very close. Um, Dame, man. Dame hurt me. You know, that second game, you know, that six point, uh, Whatever he scored, bro, that was a, that was a tough outing that night. You know, that that hurt me. You know what I mean? But like I said, man, like yo, hey, we coming. I got a strong team. I got Bradley Bill. You know, he's injured right now, so um, you know, got a got a got a nice squad, man. A nice squad. Man, yeah, I agree, man. Speaking of day, man, that remind me of something uh, on my team. I think uh, I, I, I reach for um, Scoot Williams. Um, he's been underperforming his first three games. I'm going to go ahead and hold on to him because Portland is going to give him – they're trying to give him the keys. We don't know if he's really ready, but right now he's scaring me, brother. He's not producing. 
week one, but it's only week one. He can, he can only get better, hopefully, buddy. Yeah. Dang, by you saying dang, that just reminded me. Yeah, I'm looking at, at possibly a, a point guard as well. I think uh, school is a little too young right now. Yeah, man. I'm, um, Portland was one of the teams that I, uh, I heavily scouted. Um, mm-hmm. A couple players on that team I was going after, and I was able to catch a steal and um, start. Mm, he's nice. Yeah, yeah, he's good, man. He had a good yeah. rookie season. And yeah, um, yeah. being that Dane was leaving, mm-hmm. I know he's, like, next in line to take up a lot of that bulk of the uh, load that Dane used to shoot. So, you know, he was able to get him. You know, I looked at school, but he still had, like I said, you got to get the butterflies out the belly. Yeah. One thing is, this is a dynasty league. You know, we will have to vote on how many people between three and five players at the end of the year going into next year for the returning GM. So um, that's why I was kind of big on Scoop, to be honest with you, because I, I felt like I could take him in as a, a, a young rookie and build around him. You know, um, but we'll see. You know, we didn't we don't have to designate any players as of now until the season's over and trades are done. So you never know what might happen. Um, all right, let's go ahead and jump into the next c- contest. And that was Lethal Llama um, against King Ballers. Well, I must say, this was the second top game of the week for me because I thought with Joker that King Ballers was going to go ahead and beat Lethal Llama. But Lethal Llama, he somehow toughed it out. I think... Uh, King Ballers, I think um, TJ didn't set his lineup one day, if I'm not mistaken. And I think that I heard, yeah, I have to go through there. Uh, TJ, if you watch this, man, and uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I could be wrong, but I believe you did miss a day you did set your lineups, and that could have cost you the matchup. You know, make sure you check your lineups daily. You never know. When you make the move, check your lineups because it reshuffles your, your roster. So always double check. That's the last time I'm gonna give you that tip. <laughs> you gotta like you gotta check it a couple times, man. You gotta check it in the morning, you know. Mm-hmm. You gotta check it also like in the afternoon, like right after they do the injury reports. Mm-hmm. You know, because if you miss that injury report, you'll have somebody injured or a game time decision, they be out and you be stuck. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, I, I believe, you know, most people should yeah. know that, but just in case, you forget it, you know. But I doubt it. Um, that, you know, but again, it's a good reminder. But that is great, yeah, that's you know, information. That's all. Yeah. Um, the next matchup was Pound for Pound LLC, and uh, it's Six Foot Six from North Carolina. That's a dope ass name. Honestly, a fantasy name, and that's uh, what's my man named uh, Stadium uh, Stadium Chasers, Stadium Chasers, and um, I looked at both of these teams, and to be honest with you, pound for pound, he comes from the the Dynasty League, and he man, he won the most championships over there. He's a great gym. Um, I expect nothing less. He had a great draft. I checked it out. Um, I believe he's more of a contender as well as throwbacks. Um, uh, than a pretender. I like his team, and I, honestly, I expected, you know, when I saw the matchup and the roster, that he would win. I didn't know it would be eight to three, but again, it was week one, so I'm not going to take anything out, anything from any of the losers, because I'm one of them as well. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but <laughs> I can't point the finger. <laughs> but uh, definitely, you know, look at look at our team, man, and because. Uh, you know, this week, we need this week, and next week, can't start, you know, getting these L's, man, and I think, you know, we might have to make a move. Uh, and the last, yeah, I mean, I, I'm already looking, <laughs> but I got a week to go. I'm gonna wait. If I can speak past this week, I don't know, I might hold off, but uh, it looks like I need to find another point. And the last contest was Best Kept Secret and a Metaverser. Um, best kept secret. He won a championship from the other league, 
Again, that 10 year plus years lead. He's one of the better GMs, another reason why I invited him. Uh, I love his team. I also love the Metaverses team. Like, Eddie really surprised me with his draft, bro. Um, honestly, I looked at his team. He has a nice roster. I believe both of these teams will, will if they stay healthy, have an opportunity. Who knows what how teams will look in the future after trades and stuff like that and people get hurt. Who knows? But looking at it right now, um, I, I like both of those teams. I believe they're strong teams. I believe those teams are stronger than mine as they're currently constructed. You understand? I, I need I have some work to do. Like, yeah, like um, I like I was I was surprised by um I wasn't saying so I was surprised, but I was impressed by uh Eddie's team. Um yes. I didn't like I was like he had like six centers, man. Mm-hmm. I didn't realize like how many bigs. I'm looking like yo, Jesus Christ! Like yo, he really he walked away with like yeah. some some great bigs, bro. A nice little spot, you know. And he has a, a team that I can say if he stay healthy, you know, he gotta watch out. For. You know, he told me if it, he he loves fantasy. I ain't gonna lie, he's having to go. I love fantasy. If I do it, bro, I'm gonna do it. I'm like, yeah, yeah. He, he's really showing like he wasn't bullshit. Yeah, man. Yeah, but uh, yeah, he 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 just lost by the best kept secret. I, I'm biased, man. It was a lot of great games, bro. It could have been. It was a toss about a three. Honestly, it well two. It was between your own matchup and the best kept secret in the metaverse matchup. As I would say, we had two games. Yeah, games. nail biters. Uh, uh, like they they. The this game was decided by two blocks. Like uh, best kept secret had eighteen blocks. You know, Eddie had sixteen. Mhm, mhm. Yeah, man. But it just shows that it's it, hey, the week one man. It started off with a bang, man. I was happy to see that. Let's go ahead. And, oh, before I go to get a, a day two recap of uh, week two review, uh, do you have anything to say about uh? Any teams here? Any surprises? Any anything you like? Any input, my, my dude? Um, I and mean, I just I like the league, man. I'm gonna say um, thanks for the invite for sure. But um, you know, looking at these teams, you know, there are a lot of great teams. Uh, there are a lot of like um, a lot of great GMs. I love these teams in here, yo. It's gonna be super competitive, you know. Um, yeah. Like it's already competitive, you know what I mean? Out the gate, mm-hmm. you know, out the, the gate. You know, um, you gotta love it, man. You gotta love it. Yeah, it's gonna be a fun year, man. Long season, though. Yeah. Long season. Long season. Yeah, for sure. All right, let's get started in reviewing week two. So this week I'm playing a metaverser, bro. That's going to be a, a hopefully a great game. <laughs> hopefully a great game. Uh, um, I respect this team. We're going to see what my team um, is made of. I made a couple ads and drops, drops and ads to see if I can improve the team. So we're going to see. I'm going to fight. I'm definitely going to fight. I got a heart of a champion. <laughs> and uh, uh, we got certified bucket. He was a top team last year. He's looking good this year against the head crackers. What's your feel on this matchup this week? You're currently up seven four on Tuesday. Okay. Um. Sg. Certified. Um. Hey. That boy got got Ooh. sg. He got sga man. Yo, that boy's a oh, beast. Geez. That boy's a beast. You know, he got some killers, man. He got some silent killers, man. Um, you know, D Mitch ain't a silent killer, but uh uh marketing, you know, he he's just productive, super productive, man. You know, he other than that, I mean it's like you know, Miles Bridges, he's off and on, he gets a little streaky. You know, I'm this SGA and D Mitch, you know, that's who I'm worried about the most. And um, you know, he got some injuries. 
you know, he got some injuries going on, got some big injuries. Injury bug is like, you know, it's hurting him right now. Thank God, you know, that works out for me. <laughs> You know, yeah, you ain't gonna you know, complain. Yeah, you never yeah complain, I ain't gonna bro. complain. No, no, not at mm-hmm. all. Not at all. I see he was able to pick up uh, man because I ended up moving off from man because I just I, I can't sit with these injuries, man. I need buckets right now, bro. And make you make decisions. Yeah, yeah. I got. I, I need. I need product. I need production, and I I needed some bigs. You know, I was kind of short some bigs. I ended up letting somebody go in the wire. And, like, I saw he had a little turnaround. I'm like, oh, man, he went and turned it up on me. And I tried to get him. <laughs> I tried to get him back, and he was gone. Hello? You know? Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be a little bit different next year, too, because once you designate keepers, that means you got to keep them. You can't cut them the next year, the whole season. So they got to stay, even if they get injured. It's crazy. It's a little different, but we'll get into that. This year, just make sure you're looking at three to five players you want to start next year for. Or work yourself to get three to five players you want to start next year off with. If that makes sense. Okay. Um, what I was going to say. What I was going to say. Um, who's the biggest surprise um uh, we have two questions for you. Who's the biggest surprise on your team? And also, who's, like, so far the biggest disappointment? The biggest surprise on my current team? Yeah, so far, so so far, in the, you know, since the league has started. Since the league started, let me bring up my team again. That's one thing I like about what I did with this team because it's a little different. As you know, it's a lot of spots. So we had to dive deeper into players. So you had to kind of dive a little bit deeper into role players to fill out your roster, if that makes sense. Um, Mm -hmm. But to answer your question, the biggest disappointment thus far after week one, I would say would is either my man, Scoop Henderson. I thought he would be a little bit better than that. Uh, I'm lead. I like what Holgren doing. So, uh, um, I would say Scoop, man. I mean, I really don't have a overbearing league. I, I like. I knew what Carl Anthony Towns was gonna give me. I knew what Gobert, Gobert was gonna give me. I needed some bigs. I knew with my first pick what Holler Burton was going to get me. He do what he going to do. Um, I like C.J. McCollum. I knew what he was going to get me. DeMar DeRozan. I knew what he was going to get me. You know, uh, consistency, good percentages, not too many threes. Uh, so I would say scoop. I try to balance out my team. Um, again, like I said, I, I, I need a, another dog. So I have a few bigs that I could possibly, you know, uh, try to improve my team with. But I would say scoop. Okay. I mean, when, when, what was the biggest, I mean, and then what was the biggest surprise, the, uh, you know, last week or so far, so far so good? For me, the biggest surprise, that was a major person um it wasn't last week but it was more i think it was yesterday uh that the john tay murray blew up for 41 and double digits uh uh double digits uh assists yesterday he mm-hmm. had he had uh i'm looking at it now yeah 41 three threes if i could get over there it wasn't double digits, it's just, I was wrong. So it was 41, yeah, three threes, five, seven rebounds, five assists, two steals. He made mm. four, He made 17 out of 24 shots for 70% field goal percentage. So, uh, so far, he, he's the biggest 
surprised uh, that he hit 40 before the bar. You know, Towns, I would think Towns would be able to hit 40. But so far, I, I, okay. honestly, I don't, I, I don't see that uh, I, right now. I, I don't know where I'm at with my team. I don't know if I'm a, a contender or a contender right now. Uh, I, I just, I know I need to do some improvements, but by the time end of the year, I should be in the thick of things. That's my goal. I've seen other teams better than mine right now producing after the first week, you know. So I understand no, where I where I, where I need to be. <laughs> no, it's some it's some ballers, man. It's some it's some ballers in this league, man. I'm um you know I'm in a matchup with with certified, you know. Um, I like my chances though, man. I like my chances, man. I like uh you know I got some killers. I got some killers on my team, man. Um, Dane, Anthony Edwards, PG, mm. and I see and I PG. Like, I like. It. Yeah, I know you do. I know you do. I know you do. But I'll tell you, my my biggest surprise last week was Christopher Zingas. KP, man, yo. I saw when he when he got picked up and during the uh, and in the draft, he slipped. He slipped in the draft. Yeah. I'm like, wow, nobody got him yet. And I'm like, up oh, oh, he's about to get buckets mm -hmm. because Jalen and Tatum, you know, they they're gonna garner so much attention. And and that's exactly what's happening, man. He's splashing he threes. He's back. He's back, you know. Nah, he was never. I, I, honestly, I, I I believe that Porzingis is never gone. You understand what I'm saying? And let me elaborate on that. His his knock on him has always been his health. When he's healthy, he's produced. You know, and only time I feel like only time would tell by the end of the season if he can make it through the whole season, if it was his still or not. Because his main thing is his health. Think about how many years he's been in the league and how many years he's been hurt. Yeah, a lot. It is a, it's a long season. And, and, and we're looking at it not right, real league. We're not talking about, you know, real just this NBA season. We're looking at a fantasy line or a wise because you know if he can be on your team, but if he ain't on that court, he's hurt your team. And I'm not wishing him any ill will. I hope he can make it through the whole season, but I'm just saying in general, it's not a knock on him. It's just you got to make it through that season. And certain players is just injury prone. And so far, yeah. so hurt good. you when you need it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, I, I, hope he, I hope he makes it through. Huh? I'm sorry? No, no, I didn't say anything. We uh we not yeah. we not hoping, uh, but nah, I'm not. We not hoping. We ain't no, hoping over not, here. You know what I mean? He, no, he helped. We, we're not hoping. We just stay fake. We <laughs> were just stating facts of why he can he you he, he went where he possibly went. No, I got you. Yeah, yeah. I got you, brother. We um I feel good about him though. You know what I mean? I feel good. He's looking. They um hate. They have help. His minutes. You know, he's not getting crazy. Minutes, you know, they got a uh, Horford in there to uh, relieve him. So, Boston to be good, man. Boston be Boston to be good. What was uh, um, yes, what what was your biggest steal? Do you think you got a steal, or like, there's any player that you feel that you like that you feel feel real good about? Um, uh, well, I would say Halliburton. Man. I look, I'm like, I know you should feel you should feel good about Halliburton. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I have him in my other league. Uh, he's a given, you know. I'm looking at somebody else to pair with him. You know what I'm saying? So, I I feel like for his position and what he does, he's steady. I think uh, CJ McCollum is still. He's not fancy. 
but he's consistent and he can blow up for 34. You know, where he went, you know, he can't, he really don't hurt you. You, you know what I mean? I think, I believe he'll stay healthy, but I, I love Hollenberg, man, to be honest with you. You know, I got him in my other league. I'm definitely going to keep him. Um, if I, if him, Murray, and CJ could work out for me this year and just be steady, I, I think that would be a, you know, it ain't a flashy one, but it's a consistent pair of and hopefully you'll be able to get does like Dame had that six area now. <laughs> you just gotta be consistent, man. I am looking for consistency uh, a couple uh flamethrowers. You need a big? Yeah, yeah, I could use one. Alright, we could talk offline with see. I don't wanna put you out there. Or myself out there. That's between Gene. <laughs> but uh let's look into the other couple games real quick so we can hurry up and uh, wrap this up my friend with some closing thoughts and statements and predictions the next uh matchup is the Leo llama versus six foot six from north carolina um right now six foot six is we winning as of today it's only day two eight or three um that's going to be an interesting Interesting matchup. Uh, I would like to see where that's at. I want to say around Friday with two days left to kind of get a feel with that. One. Uh, the next one I'm looking forward to this matchup. We got the Throwbacks versus the Denver Wolves. I believe they got two good teams, great teams. I'm looking forward to see where they at by Friday as well. Um, I'm thinking the next one, pound for pound versus. Uh, the best kept secret. There are arch enemies and rivals in my other league. I think that's going to be a, a pretty good uh, matchup to take a look at. It's still early. I know they are very strategic. They make the right moves and substitutions when it's needed. So that's going to be an interesting one to see. And the last one is King Ballers and Coop. I'm waiting to see if he sets his lineup every day this week. <laughs> Mr. King Ballers, and uh, I want to look at that one as well um, on Friday just to see where they at, including my matchup as well. It's still early. I like the Metaverse's team. But does any one of these matchups in week two stick out for you, Facts? Anyone that you're keeping an eye on? Um, let me see here. So six clean ballers is winning right now. And, um, shout out TJ. Let me see, man. Um, no, no, nothing off, nothing off the rip. Nothing off the rip. I'm, I'm interested in seeing, um, you know, in our division, um. You know, I can't go down 0-2, bro. You know. <laughs> Nobody trying to go down 0-2. I'm not trying to go down 0-2, bro. Well, I'm bringing up the divisions now. And you can see our sponsors on here. I mean, named the divisions after our sponsors right there. But, yeah. Oh, uh, man. We, oh, I forgot, man. You're in the same division. Yeah, we down. We got the bottom or <laughs> yeah. we looking. You know what I'm saying? You at the bottom, I'm above you. <laughs> <Get that. laughs> I'm looking at the teams. I like our division. I think our division's hard. Um, I think all the divisions hard. I'm just looking at them. Uh, yeah, two are harder than the others. I ain't going to put that out there, but two is harder than the other. I believe. So far on paper, I can say that. Look at Dana Wolves. He got Eubanks. Okay, I'm going to even put that out there. Let's go. Any um, any uh, any teams you're looking forward to? Uh, you're not looking forward to playing? Anytime soon, or it is what it is? It is what it is. But I'm looking to get some of these cats, Um, you know, 
catching some cats with their pants down, you know? Like right now, this week. Oh. Like, yo, pause, pause, yeah. Yeah, pause. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, I just said I put myself off for that one. I didn't yeah, slide that in there quick, man. <laughs> <laughs> hold on, hold on. He told him on it, Paul. <laughs> you heard? Me? Yo, yeah, you got, you got cut, you got cut that one out, dude. You got cut that one out. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh Yo, but yo, but yo, I got, I got. Oh shit! Looking falling down and shit. Y'all got certified. I got certified right now, man. And man, I'm telling you, how I lost last week. Like, Dental Wolves just came up at the last minute, like with a photo finish. Mm, last, at the buzzer, five, yeah, four, three, two, one. Uh, you know? And it probably somebody missed the shot. I'm telling you, on your squad, missed the shot. So yeah, definitely set your lineups, man. I think one day I got caught slipping with the lineup, and um, you know, it can cost you. Yeah, well, yeah, and then sit, sitting the wrong to... player, sit, you know, yeah. sitting the wrong player. I sat Matt Struess last week when he went off for like almost thirty. Mm, maybe that was you then. Maybe it wasn't to you. Maybe that was you. I stepped out. Oh, I gotta check that out. Yeah, man, and, and definitely the injury, of course. You got to always check up on your injuries. Man. Hopefully you, can get, you got your own go-to sites and things that you can check on. Definitely check on your injuries. Any, uh, any closing words? I ain't going to keep you on too much longer, man. I, I definitely, again, I want to thank you uh, for joining episode one. You're more than welcome to, you know, come back and visit us, man, be part of another one. If you if you love love to man, you're more than welcome, my dude. Uh, oh man, I yeah. appreciate you, bro. Thank you. Thanks for having me, man. Um, yeah, I'll definitely love to come back. You know, just uh, whenever, just let me know. Tap in. Yes, sir, man. We already tapped in. You evergreen, man. You evergreen for a lie. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. But for but life, nah, for life. For life, for life, man. I'm looking, I mean, uh, I didn't get a chance to really tap into, you know, what you're doing in Upland. I think, you know, we can have a, another type of platform or, uh, yeah, another platform we could talk about that. I want to kind of keep it sports. But um, I do want to give you the opportunity just to, in closing, man, just, you know, just briefly, bro. You don't have to go, you know, I'm going to give you this opportunity, but just briefly, you know, give the people, the GMs that might that might uh, watch this, uh, a little insight to the vision of what you're doing in up the metaverse from a brand and entrepreneur aspect. Again, if you could just give them a little taste, you know, one of the reasons why you're in up. Well, yeah, like um, one of the one of the things about Upland that intrigued me was the whole real world connection, you know, um, from that basis, you know, that was like one of the most intriguing things that um, made me want to look into this platform and to see where it was going. And the more that I began to look into the space, then my, my knowledge of it uh, began to grow the more and more I felt comfortable was like, yo, this is where I kind of, I need to be. I felt like um, a lot of the things that I've been working on, working towards, um, you know, have been involved in, played around with, with you know, uh, technology, hardware, software. It's like, it kind of geared me, you know, towards this space. It's like, oh shit, like I, th this is a place where I can, bring all of my toys mm. in a sense you know and um yeah and really this the linchpin was when they opened la like i tell all of my people like yo when they opened la you know um at the time i was in la i'm in new york right now um and it was just it was like yo it was crazy it was like yo 
like all these places that I have connections to, that I've been to, that I love, you know, that I have history with, um, is here. So, you know, that always intrigued me. And um yeah, man, so you know, just a lot of a lot of seeds been planted throughout the years out there. And um, you know, I got a couple projects that I've been working on. Um, you know, I'm not gonna really reveal too much, but um just uh we got some things very mysterious uh to look forward to. So um yeah man definitely keep you guys posted. Appreciate it, appreciate it. And uh, appreciate you. And where can uh you know individuals find you? What's your social? Where they can find you on social media. Right now, socials are down, man. Just um, you know, when the time is right. You know, we like I said, uh, I got a project that's gonna come out very soon. And um, from that point is when you know we'll be launching all socials and all, all platforms. So just be on the lookout. Awesome. But in the meantime, they can also find you in the Evergreen Lasher Seven Eight Discord, correct? Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed, man. Um, met hip hop, the, the number one hip hop metaverse, and. Up in Metaverse, a niche community. Well, that information and link will be in the description below, man. Again, I do appreciate you, man. We're going to wrap it up, man. Uh, FBA Breakdown, Episode 1. We'll see you on Episode 2. Peace. Peace.